that music. He's not a bat, he's a man who fights crime And we're gonna watch him fight for a minute at a time With John and Will and I guess you just rhyme It's Bat Minute! Greetings, citizens of Gotham, and welcome once again to Bat Minute Returns, the show that boasts naked sexual charisma. I am one of your hosts, John Parker. And I am the other host with the, oh, um, it's less sexual charisma, uh, <laughs> Niall McGowan. Don't sell yourself short. Come on, come on, big yourself up. You, you've got to be your own number one fan. <laughs> anyway, we are joined today once again by... Two of the greatest guests we could possibly hope for for these particular minutes, of course. Especially on a point of as far as naked sexual charisma goes. Uh, that too. Oh, I, you know, I didn't want to uh, flirt too much, but uh, yeah, you know. Uh, but yes, we have. Listen, I'll own it, Neil. If you don't want to, that's fine. You put on your onesie and just chill. I got it. You're a you're a hairy man, George. No one I am. wants to even I think am. about that, dude. And uh, every one of those hairs radiates sexual charisma. Oh, God. Individually, just emitting mm-hmm. it like little antenna array just like blasting it out into the universe <laughs> george will, will you let the man introduce us for god's sake <laughs> i well, think we just did it on our own <laughs> yeah i think you all probably have worked out who it is yes once again we have neil and george from the mogwai minute our our classic yes, mogwai dynamic mogwai minute <laughs> that's us it doesn't really work with our show. Bat Minute Returns. <laughs> I mean, you could go Bat Minute. No, it doesn't even work with Bat Minute, does it? Ah, screw it. Screw it. We are here to look at Minute 65. The minute starts with some light foot fetishism, and it ends with a nefarious scheme afoot. <laughs> it's all about feet this minute, apparently. It's yeah, it's <laughs> definitely a foot fetish minute. Oh, well, we'll be just jump on in here i guess uh, <laughs> yep uh, then we have yeah the, the as we alluded to last minute catwoman saying like oh it's it's chilly in here which to be fair uh-huh. look at what you're wearing like and it's the dead of winter what do you expect she <laughs> should be and sweating the on. <laughs> she should be sweating profusely yeah i used to have some pvc trousers and they were as, very as, warm. as, <laughs> as did i and they were absolutely uh not for summer wear no you have to peel them off <laughs> Unless you're wanting to make oh soup. Oh, my God. Was this during, like, when The Matrix came out, George? And you're like, oh, I am all about uh, this. <laughs> this was... Uh, okay, listen. N- not that far after, we'll put it that way. Yeah, it was roughly around that time. I, I did get a replica of Neo's coat made for me in Pakistan. <laughs> Holy crap. Yeah. Wow. Because I was just that into the movie. I was like, I need that coat. <laughs> I think it's because like, Neo's coat's not too bad, though, because that's just, like, a big black trench coat. I think it's when it gets into, mm. like, uh, Morpheus's kind of snakeskin thing. and just even Oh, Trin- I like that. Yeah. But even, like, Trinity's, like, just, yeah, she's just all P- this PVC vest. It's like, that is the thing. Of, of all the stuff in this movie, that is what's going to date it the most. That and the little flip, ca- <laughs> the little flip flown thing. So like, no, both of these things are. Which I remember those fo- when I saw that for the first time. I thought that was the coolest thing in the world. Yeah, like a little like oh, spring I, I, lock I, I, flip on your phone. Yeah, I remember I the, like, the adverts because they used to have proper adverts with the major things. They use these phones. I was like, oh, I haven't even seen the movie yet, but that it's phone like, is. And then they just throw it in the trash. That's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Matrix minute. <laughs> yes, oh, I never got it, to go on it. I was invited on fifty times, and the schedule never worked out. Oh, be, well. Which is so weird because you guys are relatively in the same time zone. Yeah, yeah I he, know. It's just he. <laughs> if anyone was he would often single. get like a free bit in the schedule, like the day before, and it's like I, I oh, haven't got yeah. the time to do. That. <laughs> but um, but yeah, that's what we yeah. Catwoman does say like, oh, it's oh, it's chilly in here, and then uh, you know, again, the penguin subtle. And, uh, you know, suave as he is, goes in for this, I'll warm you. And uh, then she instantly <laughs> sticks up the uh, the boots that we know from last episode. The boots. Neil is a fan of. <laughs> and this is oh. the, uh, the, the, the the watershed moment for Neil and Niall as they were young. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. this, turned, this, turned to, this turned to page. Something was shed. It, it wasn't water, though. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll admit, you know, it, it's, it's pretty sexy. 
the oh, way yeah. she, she's in full dominatrix mode here, and even the choice of dialogue down Oswald. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like he's mm-hmm. a dog. Mm. It's like a dog. Like and a dog. He gives it a good old sniff, doesn't he? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that, yeah, was, that That's always the weird part when he kind of sniffs the heel of her boot. <laughs> I do, it's like, yeah. oh man. I do love that though, and the fact that like you cannot stop this guy. Like her, even her going right. No, that's enough. It's just opened up a new avenue an for him to be pervy. <laughs> Oh, that was an acting yeah. choice on DeVito's part. He's like, I'm going to sniff her shoe. <laughs> <laughs> I'd I, sniff it. Uh, I will say, though, um, <laughs> I've seen behind the scenes footage of them sh- shooting this scene. And uh, the thing is, you know, everything about that Catwoman outfit looks like it would be uncomfortable. But it's very telling in mm-hmm. that every other shot that doesn't involve her feet been up, you see Michelle Pfeiffer wearing red sneakers because she was obviously like, if you don't have to see the feet, no chance in hell I'm wearing the Not boots again. Putting those boots on. Yeah, it's yeah. like not fair play. Two, well, there's two two ways of doing that, though, isn't there? Some people like to because then they're in the headspace of the character, like you said with Danny DeVito, you know, wearing the suit. He, he quite enjoyed that in a way, you know, mm. to help him get in the headspace. But then I also understand, like, if you're not seeing the feet, well, that's, I get it, I mm. get it. That's what um, thing he did. Uh, 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 Peter Cushing when he was playing Tarkin, wasn't it? He? he was famous <laughs> for having slippers on instead of the boots. <laughs> They said to him, you've got to wear the boots. And he's like, nope. (laughs) It's like, will they be on camera? No. He's one of the the, the last people to be just like, hey, f*** you, the George Lucas. (laughs) It's like, I'm a bigger deal than you are, kid. Like... Well, would you cast, like, these ancient, awesome, iconic British actors to be in your weird space play? You're going to get weird looks. I mean, they talk constantly about how, like, a... Obi Wan, um, Alec Guinness. Name. Oh, Alec Guinness. Alec Guinness was like, "What? What am I? What are the words I am saying? I don't <laughs> yeah. understand these words, but I have to say them. I don't know what they mean because it's like it's mishmash to them. So what he's talking about fully operational battle stations. He's going to wear slippers because that's the only way he's going to feel comfortable. Exactly, and you don't question that man. He can do whatever the hell he wants. I just wonder in Rogue One when they put CGI Peter Cushing in there. The, the, the thick people put in he put like CGI slippers on every time the, the camera was above <laughs> <Yes>. his waist <laughs> there was a there was a cutscene where CGI uh, Peter Cushing complained about having to wear the boots <laughs> oh god I would love that I would love that but Peter, Peter Weller did the same when he was Robocop when he was driving whenever he was driving a car he used to like like the scenes where he drove a car because he could just wear his boxer shorts. <laughs> yeah, because like, he had to wear the, the the actual like metal pants. <laughs> he was naked yeah. from the waist down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that'd be great though. It's like, every, like people on set were saying like, yeah, every time he'd come into the, the writers' room in the evening, going, guys, so how about this in this finale? The whole thing's a car chase, okay? And like, no one ever has to get out of the car. Like, no, we got this whole we thing. Right. Right. Oh, Peter, Peter get out of here. <laughs> you just don't want to wear pants. Get out of here. Uh, we're paying you for this. But in talking about Danny DeVito channeling the character, uh, this is a thing. Like, I've been waiting to, to say this for a while because it's, like, one of the things that really struck me when I started doing research into this and watching, like, the you know, the making of documentaries and stuff uh, mm. is that one of the things pe- – every, everyone – else seemed to be really good. Like, oh, Dan DeVito, wonderful guy to work with. He he stayed in character the whole time. He was always like, yeah, in between scenes, he'd be talking like the Penguin. He'd just be acting like the Penguin. And then there's one thing at the beginning of one of those documentaries where it cuts to Michelle Pfeiffer going, yes, he stayed in character between takes. It was very creepy. And it's like, <laughs> was he just sleazing on Michelle Pfeiffer the whole time, basically? Like, that's why they've never worked together <laughs> that since. That was his character. Be. He's like, I'm a character. Uh, uh, hello, Michelle. Uh, you can't sue me. It's part of the job. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, I'm, in, I'm, I'm, I'm a method actor. Yeah. It's like, I got an opportunity to just be a complete sleaze bag to this really attractive woman. Hey, can't, it's the character. It's not me, babe. <laughs> it's like, oh, that seems pretty bad. Hate Danny. the character, yeah. But that's, that's a recurring thing, though. Everything you watch from back in the day of Michelle Pfeiffer having to talk about it being in the movie. It, anytime anything sexual is brought up, she does seem very uncomfortable. Like, I think we there's an episode we talked about at one point where she'd been interviewed with by Barry Norman, and he's all talking about, like, oh, dominatrix and whips and stuff. And she just seems very like, uh-huh, okay. Like, she's just a bit sort of like, is he getting off on this, talking to me about it or something? And <laughs> but, Yeah, she's probably right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just, yeah, and I can imagine, like, maybe she was actually, like, th- this is, like, a, a breeding ground, particularly back in the, like, you know, way pre, you know, Me Too movement, where it's like, maybe this yeah. was mm-hmm. a breeding ground for people to sleaze on Michelle Pfeiffer and stuff. 
Oh yeah, I'm sure I it mean, was. I'm sure a lot of the crew. I think you, you I feel everyone was very them. nice to her during Lady Hawk. Mm. Mm. <laughs> and I don't know. I think it was just the 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 creature, the creepiness of the character that that, that spawned it. Mm. <laughs> but uh, also notice that's uh, keeping up from the thing we talked about last week. We see not only is Miss Kitty making an appearance on the bed, but uh, Catwoman's whip is back. The whip that oh, she yeah. left behind yeah. on, mm-hmm. uh, on the aerial. Uh, so there's obviously some sort of scene where Selena had to get up early in the morning, go back to that building, <laughs> climb up the side or of it. Or she go has <laughs> more than one whip. I mean, come on. She's like, you know, she opens it up and it's like that, you know, everyone has the same like, like the it's like the kingpins, like just you know, 27 white suits. She's got like, you know, just whips hanging on rows. It's how she's like, oh, today's the Thursday whip. Well, we did, we did bring up, uh, I think it was last week, actually. Like, where did she get the whip? Because from the store. <laughs> well, the, but this is the thing. It seems like maybe Selena Kyle herself already had the whip, which is interesting. I mean, possibly. Like maybe this was something she enjoyed in her prime. Although she was life. so so, if I remember correctly, Selena was into sewing, right? Yeah. And yeah. then made her own costume. Maybe she braided her own whip. Could be. That seems a step too far. Is <laughs> actually made of like an old belt or something. If if Daredevil can, I mean not Daredevil. If uh, uh, Deadpool can go from sweats to like fully uh, like tailored uh, neoprene or whatever he wears, like by the time you know the end of that song happens, I think she True. can figure out how to braid a whip. <laughs> I will say though. Um... Like, I think it's, it, I'm surprised, like, marketing didn't try to do something, though. Because, like, oh, you had one whip. Why don't you update this? This this new whip. Maybe she gets, like, a cat of nine tails the next time. And then you can sell, <gasps> oh, my God, oh yeah. there's, a, there's a cat woman with a whip. And there's another cat woman with a cat of nine tails. You, why don't you get your kids both, parents? This, it seems like that would have been the shrewd marketing decision to make. But I don't think Tim Burton <laughs> cares. Would that That's have been the for the uh, 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 BDCSM crowd? Uh, uh, get it get it uh no no George. <laughs> you know from a from a design perspective the whip of course is a surrogate tail because she has yeah. no tail yeah yeah um the thing, so you, do, nice. you do see some catwoman outfits though where she has a tail and it always looks really stupid too where it's like yeah i think you were talking actually last minute uh neil about tim sale but yeah in the, the long halloween and stuff his artwork has catwoman I, I never liked the outfit. There's this purple thing. Was it almost mm. like she has like they're, they're more like actual bat ears than a cat ears, and then this tail, and it just looks like that's going to be cumbersome because it's just like you've got this thing dangling out behind you. It's going to get trapped in stuff. It's going to. It'd be the same concern yeah. I always had if you ever watch any of those those Tom Baker Doctor Who's, where it's like that scarf is too long. <laughs> Why would you wear that? Like it's just <laughs> it gets trapped. There must things. be <laughs> so many cut like deleted scenes or deleted takes. Of Tom Baker, Someone steps on it. yeah, where he's tri- that's tripping over the scarf or something, and strangling himself at <laughs> the time. It's like, oh, why would you do that? Like, I really, I really like her. I mean, I okay, I I do really dig the Michelle Pfeiffer t- storm tits. I mean, tits. Ah, I can't speak. What are you saying there, George? Stitches. <laughs> yeah. You like, like Michelle sort of like, Pfeiffer's tits? <laughs> yeah, stitch tits. Yeah, no, but her like sort of like slap dash like like neoprene vinyl like thing. But one of my favorites is um, the the. Bat, the Catwoman outfit from the Telltale Batman series. Mm. Oh yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. very like tactical and almost military grade, but the ears are like a little afterthought. She's got goggles, and it's very practical, and I always like that. See, I am a big fan of the the modern Catwoman. I, I do like the goggles and stuff nowadays, and the yeah, they have mm-hmm. kind of simplified it down a bit more to be like, yeah, it's kind of like just like wearing a jumpsuit, but it's kind of cool cat stuff on their head and stuff. And I just like the shorter hair and stuff. Like that's just like aesthetically to me, it's like yeah, this is all. Uh, more appealing, but, uh, but you know, different. Well, I strokes. actually really liked. I really liked her look, although I don't like the movie, and I don't really like the character in the movie that much. In Dark Knight Rises, I like the look and the explanation for the goggle thing that she's wearing, and then flips yeah. them up in their ears. I quite liked that. See, I don't yeah. though. I don't think I liked it. No. Yeah. No. I didn't. But I also have major issues with that movie as it is. It's not oh, just yeah, her designed too. aesthetic. <laughs> I am not a fan of the film. Now oh. knows this. <laughs> but then, of course, we get. Catwoman and the Penguin begin their their conversation here, and the, she loses the fact that they yep. have something in common. And he responds with, you know, oh, appetite for destruction, which would uh, indicate that he's hoping that she is a mutual Guns N' Roses fan. Because uh, I would say, they, they have shared that, yeah. yeah. we all know that was uh, deleted scenes of Penguin out in the campaign trail, blaring Paradise City as he walked on stage <laughs> and stuff. And 
Like we wanted to have like the the rioters earlier with boom boxes playing "Welcome to the Jungle" and stuff. But like, yeah, I I'm not a fan of them these days. But I I have a soft spot for Guns N' Roses because they were my first ever album that I bought. I I bought uh, "Use Your Illusion" two on yeah. cassette. Anything up until then is fine. Anything mm. anything after that is garbage. Well, I think I bought that though because, uh, well, because they're in Terminator Two, which was my favourite movie yeah. as a kid. A kid shouldn't be watching it, but I did. Whatever. <laughs> and my sister had Use Your Illusion One, so I was forced into you. You've got to get two. So oh, all right. <laughs> it's like basically it's the B sides of one. No, no, no. It's like the B sides of one. Like it's like the ones that didn't make one is on two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. But when you're a little kid, you don't care. You're like, yeah, this is cool. That's still one of my favorite jokes though from Arrested Development is when Job's talking to the Tony Wonder. You know, Ben Stiller is like the magician character, and he's like, oh yeah, I'm starting a new thing. It's called Use Your Illusion. And then like the next time he sees him, he's just like, oh yeah, apparently we can't use the name Use Your Illusion because some bands already got it. So we're going to call it, I don't know, Use Your Illusion 2. And it just kind of leaves it there. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they get very close on this bed, don't they? Yeah, yeah, oh, they yeah. do. Because all that sexual charisma. I was also very uh-huh. intrigued by this whole thing because, you know, the things they have in common is like, uh, appetite for destruction, contempt for the czars of fashion. And it's kind of like, to be fair, they're, <laughs> yeah, both looking, yeah, they're both looking pretty good here, though. It's like, yeah, the, the, the penguin himself looks very, uh, he looks very well tailored. It's weird that he's saying that because he looks like he's. No, they look cool, but it's not, they don't look normal, do they? I mean, they look weird. Yeah. So I, I feel that. I look weird all the time. Yes. I'm, I'm wearing a dress. At the do, do, you have, do you have contempt for the czars of fashion? Jim? I do. I do. He embraces the czars of fashion as long as, you know, you know, and then takes it out a new door. <laughs> To quote the first Batman. <laughs> yes. I do wonder how much of the Penguin's look is him, though. Because you see, if you see his trousers, they're actually very similar to the the, the striped suit that Shrek was wearing. It's the, it's almost as if he's wearing the trousers of that suit. Well, it's, it is Shrek, Shrek stylists, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so I wonder if it is. The girl yeah. he tried to... Per, the girl he was perving over earlier, and then <laughs> the guy he bit in the, in the face. Yeah. <laughs> It's I'm surprised handiwork, he didn't perv on the guy as well. That would be more yeah. interesting with his character. He doesn't care. It's, it's all that sexual charisma. Like you to just fill her just... void. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I wonder if that, that is like that he get yeah, yeah. Uh, that he sort of um, you know go like did he give a thumbs up to everything they put on him or is he just like yep they're making me wear this suit and stuff and I hate it and like he's like, he's not a fan of the t- like, he didn't like that friggin' cigarette uh, holder to try to put in his mouth. He doesn't like this top hat, but he's like, well, I guess I better go with this in the meantime. He seems quite happy in in the rest of it, though. It's like, even this though as well. Like this bed they're on is so insanely fancy. Like that's clearly like a yeah. Max Shrek. Like I'll give him one of the beds from one of my rooms somewhere. <laughs> And it's, yeah. just like, it's just like, yeah, it's a really fancy bread that doesn't suit the rest of the decor in any way at all. Much like the friggin' the desk he had was insanely fancy desk. I, this is, this to me is all poodle lady though, this bit. The bed, uh, all the kind of fancy frills, the lampshade and all this kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. More proof think? that they've got it on. Yeah, maybe. Well, so poodle lady. She's making sure that's a big enough bed for, for two. Or, you know. Yeah. And maybe and the, and the a casual thing, but she's trying to make it more serious. <laughs> maybe that's why at the end when she just like she abandons him this is like this is officially over between me and you Oswald <laughs> I can see that you're far too wrapped up in this Batman character <laughs> well that that's actually is another point I wanted to bring up though because um, she mentions that like, the thing they have in common is is Batman you know and then she does in a very 1960 show way of like oh the fly and our ointments and stuff mm. um, but the thing is to me is like is is I know he is, but like the Penguin's relationship with Batman so far doesn't really indicate that like oh he is the fly in my ointment because like what 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 has his encounters with Batman been? It's like he he needed to get Max Shrek at the beginning, so he launched this whole riot. He did successfully, and then the next encounter he had was oh yeah uh, we need to go start a riot on the streets of Gotham. He did that successfully. He got away from Batman mm-hmm. and all the all the, the thugs and the members of the Red Triangle gang, they're still loose. Like they they didn't get arrested. So Batman to him is kind of like it is very much like, uh eh, he's kinda of annoying, but like he's not gotten my way yeah, so but far. He knows he's on his case he knows he's on his case, that's the thing, and he knows yeah. that Batman's the one person that's uh, potentially gonna stop mm. him. Yeah, Batman has he's said that he's coming for it. <laughs> I, I love it though when uh when Catwoman reveals that she's talking about Batman here, 
Because Oswald's reaction when she says his name, he looks like annoyed and upset that this is the way the conversation went. Yeah. (laughs) He's like, oh, damn it. I thought this was going to be sexy. You're on my bed. Everyone's (laughs) been there, man and woman, who's had that conversation of like, oh, this is like, oh, this is, oh, this is going to be like, oh, wait, we're talking. Oh, we're having a real conversation. (laughs) (laughs) God damn it. (laughs) Oh, man. Okay. I got to retrain that brain real quick because that was not where I was expecting this to go. (laughs) But he was kind of doing all right. They got, he got super close in. She says, Batman, she says, you know, flying the ointment, and then, and then he makes a strange decision to to kind of bounce off the bed, go and get the ointment. <laughs> yeah. It's like, well, he's I was just, I don't know, why did he do that? I want to point out how amazing her sexual energy is. Not not the fact that she's sexy, but the fact that she has this sort of like bubble. That mm. she she controls and like she draws him in and then stops him and draws him in and stops him and then and she stops him with just a look or a gesture or a word. It's never she never has to really like put her hands on him to like no and no you know because he is like got this sort yeah. of like she's got this power over him and like it is such a weirdly not weirdly but especially for the time like a amazingly strong female character to have like this this ability to control like the situation based on like you know such small movements such a great character mm. I. Love- love that that's the best thing about her the way she uses sexuality as her weapon against yeah. men it's usually. like it's like her, so she doesn't have a whip and she's not using a whip she's not using her claws she's just using her personality and and like this this energy she has and it's amazing mm. <laughs> i think so again now another thing that i didn't get as a kid but now is just so blatant is that when he goes like oh ointment what you want scented or unscented and it's just like oh i i get what that ointment's supposed to be wait i've got a question about this right this is what confuses it's a, it's me a, it's a lube joke now. i know it's i know I get, I get i get it now <laughs> wait so it's a lube he's on about lube yeah that's what he's talking yeah. about that's not ointment i know i think he's just that doesn't make sense he's just trying to get this back i work in a pharmacy i know what ointment is i think it's, he's just trying to get it back to his what he wants the conversation to go like in any way so ointment's kind of like it doesn't work. And the thing is i think i think not now, you, well, I suppose it is. you might you might know too much about ointment in order for this to make any <laughs> sense it's like i'm sorry let me categorize that do you mean topical uh yeah. like, <laughs> like i when i'm at work i need to know when people are ordering things like do they want a cream do they want an ointment do they want a gel is it I, water very based? specific is it, is it, what is, is an ointment what is it it's uh, i'm trying to think how to word it it's slightly different to a cream <laughs> it's not quite a cream it's, like oily it's thing. not quite an ointment it's oily <laughs> Yeah, it's it's to do. I think it, the difference Ointment, is to do with how water reacts. A smooth, oily preparation that is rubbed on the skin for medicinal purposes or as a cosmetic, and it's a, so ointment apparently is oil based. Yeah, yeah. Whereas like a gel or a cream can be water or yeah, exactly. So that, it is a there is a difference uh, in how they kind of sit on the skin and stuff. Like uh, I can't remember which way around it is. One will rub in and one will kind of sit on the skin. <clears throat> <you know? laughs> The thing is, because uh, again, <laughs> I'm not a big. Um, oh, but there's no way to make this friggin' this week PG at all. I, I'm not. I don't. I'm, I'm not a big user of lubricant myself. So i Oh my god! I, this idea that he has both scented and unscented is like news to me. Like the scented. Oh, did you not know there was two? Well, well, well I'm just kind of assume like, oh, you know, KY jelly or whatever, whatever you're going to use is just. No, ugh. no, no, never use that. Never use that. No, you need. You're the not treating stuff. your ladies now. <laughs> no. Come on. But I would also advise don't. Not the scented. Mm. No. So well, it depends what scented. <laughs> it's not, not scented good. is always scented is off the show. It's no, don't use the ever. No. Yeah, I, it I can second be bad that emotion. For, um, certain areas as well. <laughs> They're saying like scented. I'm assuming it's irritant. supposed to be... It could be an irritant. I'm assuming it's yeah. going to be like a... Like You're an a, irritant, George. An aphrodisiac <laughs> yeah, kind of scent, I am. though. Like it's going to be something like, oh, it'll be like a lavender or something. It's not just like, oh, this one stinks. Oysters. There are just some places you don't want to smell like ylang ylang, and that is from the waist down. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, too, because I'm also really... not particularly... Uh, I've not got a particularly good hand-eye coordination. So I have to say, I'm very impressed with this <laughs> flipping over the head and catching it. and Particularly considering the outfit he's wearing and the fact he's got the, the big friggin' penguin gloves on. This is actually very, uh, Danny da, 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 DeVito, very dexterous guy, apparently. Yeah, I'm, I'm impressed that he does it with the gloves on. Again, I, I spend all day at work doing this with the with the ointments <laughs> and things, so I can flip it. 
the thing, I was also impressed, though, how he got rid of his top hat as well. He kind of, as he's going around, he quickly sticks it on top of the umbrella stand. And then he goes over and does this little flip. I was like, oh, this guy's actually, like, the Vito can move, mm. apparently. It's like he can, he can move when he wants to. But um, Got the moves like the Vito. <laughs> I also noticed, too, like, if you pause it, on his nightstand, there's a very intriguing thing that it looks a bit like it could be a penguin and a hat wearing a waistcoat. Mm. But it also looks like it's got like chains ra- wrapped around its flip, its wings or something. Or... Where's this? What Hang second on. are you pausing it on? Here, oh, see, though? I've got the whole as as she's getting off the bed, you see it. Uh-huh. Like if you just pause right there. Wait, on the right? No, on the on the left. You mean the like left. the base of the lamp, which is like a like a woman? Some... It looks like a woman in a dress. That's what I thought mm. he was talking about, but it must be something else. <laughs> I've got the, 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 Are you imagining this? I can see the the a penguin. He's got both lamp. Both of those lamps are like that sort of like uh, Versailles esque, like French fourteenth century French court, mm. like you know, yeah. dressed type oh, thing. Oh, we see that. It's just on the left. <laughs> On the left side of the bed is a man, and the right side of the bed is like a Marie Antoinette esque like woman. Oh my god, I'm saying something completely. This this is like visual uh, mandala effect, right? It's like what the? <laughs> it looks to me like a penguin, but like, oh yeah, well, I'm good. I'm not numbered here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A penguin. <laughs> it's just, it's just so, so it's now. It's like so many. I've accidentally dated so many penguins in my life, and I, I think maybe maybe <laughs> I've found the root of this problem now. <laughs> you thought they were short nuns for so long. <laughs> Uh, also, too, as Catwoman gets up, uh, there's a little bit of continuity as well in the fact that you can see that her outfit's very, very busted up. And you can see, like, mm-hmm. um, rip- the stitches are broken. Stitches are and, broken. Ripped yeah. it. To me, it looks like like they couldn't have done it because that would have been absolute hell for her. But, like, you see in the holes, it doesn't look like it's skin. Coming. It, it's almost too white. It's like it's like a white yeah, it's, yeah. It's like a under. Yeah, it's like a fabric underneath. You don't want you don't want all that line all right on your skin because then you just sweat to death. You need some sort of padding. Mm, to do know again in behind the scenes pictures, you see when uh, Michelle has the 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 cowl off. She is wearing a thing around her hair and stuff. That just, that just seems like oh, mm-hmm. not only you put on this insanely tight vinyl outfit, you've also got to put on like a body stocking underneath as well. It's like oh my god, like a. Mm. That almost, it's like I can imagine people would turn down playing the part because of like the sheer discomfort you'd have to go through. I guess maybe she didn't know at the time. It was like, oh, by the way, we're going to put you through absolute hell to get to get in this outfit. <laughs> it's like, oh, it'll be a nice jumpsuit. It's like, nope, it's going to be so much more than that. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, so when you, when she does get up and she goes towards the birdcage, you can see the back of it. So it's just, she's got like, a, it's a corset. Yeah. Um, in, in the midriff kind of section, right? And then you can see what looks like a zip, like at the base of her, like top of her neck. So the, like the base of her skull yeah. going down. And then if you go below the corset, it looks like another zipper right down the crack of her ass. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I, I have uh, fake rip-off versions of uh, Vivian Westwood's old 1970s punk trousers, the bondage trousers, and they, they have a zip that goes all the way around there. <laughs> right. I imagine that's how she gets them off. Uh, yeah. So to speak. And that's also how you uh, go to the bathroom wearing them. Uh, yeah. I do know she had trouble with the, the bathroom element because I think they said because they had the vacuum packer into it. So it was very much yeah. like once you have this on, you ain't getting out until we until we're done. And I know uh, we, we kind of speculate. You know what would have helped her out a lot? A catheter. <laughs> oh, <laughs> did you just pun catheter? George? I did. I did. Neil. I did. Oh my god! It's the first time with a everyone. smile on my face. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> um, oh my god! Although, how do what? we even top that? <laughs> I, I've got, I've got and a, I've that's got about a, it. Well, I have a question. So, the, after the ointment bit, she gets off the bed. I mean, she says to him, oh, I'll come back later. Mm. And she gets off the bed. He then kind of walks around the bed and he grabs an umbrella. Yeah. Right. Why, yeah. And it's a specific umbrella. We'll see. Why does he grab the umbrella at this point? Because that's that, a, this is an offensive weapon. Mm. That he's that's interesting. Up. There is a bit. I was going to save it for the next minute. I'm not sure. Okay. There's a bit in the draft by Wesley Strick. I think it's the Strick draft. Let me just double check. Yeah, there's a bit in the draft. How do I say this? Where the penguin picks up an umbrella in a minute. 
I'll just say it now. Uh, <laughs> and he starts stroking Catwoman with it. And it <laughs> oh, is wow. described in the script in writing as an umbrella dildo. Mm. Oh, what? Which... And he's caressing her thigh with it. Again, this this is even more important with this one. Do not open it inside. <laughs> so, uh, maybe yeah. that's like a just left over. Like, well, you pick something up here. Just we won't put a dildo on the end. Because <laughs> what, 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 what would that look like visually? Though it's going to have to just be an umbrella with a dildo stuck to it. Like, there's no yeah. way you can make that yeah. kind of suave or anything. It's like, yeah, this is blatantly what it is. And why does he have that? Has he used it before with someone? I'll tell you, man. The the penguin. That's a. That's a, <laughs> gets his gifts. That's why he's got the, the, the ointment <laughs> there as well. He's like, well, you gotta get the. Oh make sure you God. get that that stuff it doesn't get stuck in there. You know. So. See, I was gonna lobby for this uh, episode title to be lubricant, <laughs> but um, uh, I think the penguin might also be right up there. <laughs> <laughs> the penguin and the lubricant. <laughs> Apostrophe T. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, but again, though, because this is much more like uh, the, uh, the, there's a line that comes up in the next minute as well. That was in the, the original Dan Waters draft, and he was very much like laying it on both uh, in sexy things and sexist things, like. He was. Uh, he had a kind of real thing about like, oh, well, let's make it so blatantly obvious what's happening here. Whereas in the final movie, they kind of subtle it down a little bit, even though it's not yeah. really subtle. But it's like it's much more subtle than it could have been. Um, oh my, yes. The thing is, though, seeing uh, you know, thinking it now though about like Catwoman's outfit and just how overtly sexual everything in this scene actually is, it actually made me think. Uh, it was about a couple of weeks back. Uh, we had on. Uh, Lauren Ashley Carter on the show and she talked about she had a Catwoman outfit when she was a kid and I, at the time no. it didn't strike me but now it's like oh that's really <laughs> like wait yeah, what? that's really inappropriate <laughs> for children to have this outfit and so I was like I wonder if it was an exact thing of, of this Catwoman and I looked up like okay Catwoman costume for children couldn't find one of this one but was even worse was that you can get children's versions of the Halle Berry Catwoman costume Wait. Oh, that's skimpy. Yeah, that's way. I was gonna say because you can there. This is one of the Moan characters in like the, the history of pop culture, which has just reflecting the times always maintained an air of just overt sexuality. Like never has she ever been played like anything but that. Mm. True. Ever. True. Like like you know Julie Newmar back in the day, she was still very purry and flirty and like always with like the innuendo and stuff like that. All the way to this version, which is like just a straight up dominatrix, and she's always had this sort of like really dark, heavily sexualized edge to her, which she is basically the only real sexual aspect that comes into the Batman universe. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Poison you Ivy have well, well you have like Harley Quinn, which is kind of like you know more like a or Poison Ivy, yeah, we do more like femme fatale type things, but. You know, the closest that it comes to Batman having a sex life is his interaction with Catwoman. So it's 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 it's, it's definitely not the childhood costume from. <laughs> and as a parent, I would never do that. No, no. That's what made, like, as George's hard and fast rule of Halloween, like don't even consider bringing the word Catwoman. <laughs> no Catwoman until you're eighteen. <laughs> but, uh, but no, I thought the, the thing is though, I don't even know if we can put this in the show because uh, we're getting into <laughs> unpleasant. Uh, territory uh, we as white men probably shouldn't be able to talk about but like in that children's Halle Berry costume they don't have like oh, all the, the bare midriff and stuff but they've got a shirt that is the color of Harry, Halle, sorry, Halle Berry's skin so it means that uh -huh. you get a little white children wearing a shirt that's essentially <laughs> a black woman's body and so they, oh are, they, are they black are they black torso yeah. yeah and it's like uh, that, that doesn't, that's weird. Yeah. That doesn't seem like that's, that's, not, that's no, not okay yeah. that's not okay kids no, that's not. That's Jesus. Okay. <laughs> you just imagine, though, the, the, everything to do with the, the dumpster fire that was that movie. And then when, just when they thought it was over, the studio's like, okay, I think we, have, we might be able to scrape the last of that Catwoman movie off our shoe. Then they get these complaints about, like, the racist <laughs> Catwoman costume for kids. And they're like, oh, and, my God. And now it's been highlighted on this show. People are going to write in now you, all these years You've later. heard it here, folks. Write your senator. 14 years later. <laughs> <laughs> it's finally reared his head. <laughs> Although, please, I'm surprised that you're still able to buy them. Because, like, what kid wants this? This is only 
you can only buy this off like <laughs> eBay or something. We're like, yeah, we got them. <laughs> like, it's that one weird, really ironic kid who's like, I want to be Catwoman from the horrible Catwoman movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ironically. <laughs> That'd be that'd be my kid. Mm. They'd like crap movies like me. Uh, that's the thing though. If I was ever to make any like costumes like that though, I'd have to do my own spin. Like if I was to make a Catwoman costume, I wouldn't buy a store one. I'd have to make my own. Actually, the only way you could really do a Catwoman costume and be like non-sexual is if you did the Selena Kyle from Gotham, which is like curly hair and like street clothes and like goggles, and it's very kind of like militant punky Brewster sort of mm. thing. Yeah, yeah. That would be good for kids. That would work. Yeah, that's the only way you could do a cat <laughs> for a child under 18 <laughs> and not have it, you know, push into weird illegal territory. Yeah. I was actually considering <laughs> this year for Halloween of doing Selena when she's falling out the window. Like, oh, maybe I get a load of cats and attach the, uh, get the kind of gray dress and I yeah, attach be a load of cats and stuff. But then I didn't <laughs> want to also be like, I'm doing a podcast about that and I return. So every time anyone asks me about like – what are you up to? I mentioned that, and I'm like, "Well, who who are you?" I'm like, "I am also Selena Kyle from Batman Returns." I'm kind yeah, of so I was like, "Oh, better." Like, I'll, may, I'll maybe maybe next year. Keeping maybe next year. on theme, yes. <laughs> I've got one last thing I'm going to bring up before we uh, we go. I, I was going to save it because it's only the last few seconds here, but I'm, I'm going to bring it up now. Well, first, Catwoman, of course, says, "Oh, we, they're going to ban the bat." That's their campaign, mm. basically. But then they the camera moves over, and you see the Red Triangle Gang. Mm. And they've got blueprints mm -hmm. to the Batmobile because Penguin says they're going to disassemble it. Where did they get these blueprints? These are proper detailed blueprints as if they actually <laughs> this is what was used to create the Batmobile. Honestly, I've got a lot of notes on it, uh, but I was going to save them for the next minute. Save, save them, them, next minute, save yeah. them. I will, We will tease people with that yeah. question. Where the hell did they Ooh. get these blueprints? Dun, dun, I've dun. got two possible avenues, and neither of them are definitive. But it seems like there was attempts to clean this up. But uh, at, as at okay. present, it yeah. is very much like a huh in the movie that you just have to sort of accept that somehow they have. I mean, I, I'm just assuming they've stolen them somehow. But there's no mention. No, of it. no. <laughs> but uh, I do also love the way um, again because. It's like the penguin's trying to get this bit of the conversation over with almost as well, where she's like, oh, yeah, ban the bat. Because he, he has this one sort of gamut of like, oh, I'm a mayoral prospect, you know, and sort of come along with trying to look fancy. He's like, yes, I'm a, a fancy, respectable person. See if this works on her, trying to get her back into bed. And then, of course, with the, you know, when she mentions, oh, ban the bat, it's like, oh, him again. It's like, we were just talking about him. It's like, no, I, I'm desperately trying to get out of this area of conversation. Because like, he's totally, he's totally getting that sort of like jealous, like, oh, you came over and like you just keep talking about this other guy. It's like, <laughs> calm down. Friend zoned. No expectations, <laughs> Penguin. That's, that's the, that's mm. the, yeah. Well, <laughs> you're not entitled to anything. Exactly. I have to say, though, uh, Red Triangle Gang must be the best workers you could have because they are oh. so quiet. Like, there's no chit-chat. Oh, yeah. They're just sitting there. You wouldn't even know when they were in the corner and <laughs> they hadn't alluded to them. Well, then you had to think that, that Penguin is all ready to throw down with Catwoman right there, and there's an entire menagerie sitting 20 <laughs> feet away working on this stuff. Oh, they're ready for it. They're yeah, ready he's, for like, they're, he's just like, whatever, it's uh -huh. fine. They've seen Either it all before. They are completely sure that it's, nothing's going to happen, or they've seen it enough to where they don't even phase by it anymore. Yeah, no, I think, you know, they're, they're carnies. They're, they're into some weird yeah. stuff. <laughs> so you never saw in Arctic World. There didn't seem to be separate bedrooms down there. So it's like, yep, you want to – everything. <laughs> mm -hmm. there's no secrets between the Red Triangle gang. Penguin's a big, a big fan of the open floor plan. <laughs> yeah, could be. Cool. Maybe they all join in. They all have fun. That's where the, yeah. Yeah. the name comes from. It's like, oh, it's not like a circus thing. It's like, oh, no, we have a special move that the, the gang does. The, the, <laughs> it's called the Red Triangle, yeah. <laughs> it's like a devil's three-way, but <laughs> way different. Well, I, I think the I think the poodle lady is kind of cute. So yeah. oh, no, I've, got, I've got a thing for the, I for the poodle lady. Yeah, I'll give it to her. I do like actually the way... Um, and, and, Helena Bonham Carter in the background. <laughs> yeah. I actually love the way uh, the – because they're obviously – they are listening to the conversation because the organ grinder does this grand sort of presenting the blueprints. of like, yes, mm -hmm. we've got these. And he's just busy toiling the way. And um, I do, I, I, we, we alluded to it uh, in other episodes. I kind of do wish they had uh, put a bit more emphasis on it that, like, potentially you could have saw the organ grinder and the poodle lady – as parental figures to the penguin. Like, this is the family unit that he's got here. It's like, most of the, the clowns are all the brothers, and then these two are the parents. And even the way he's sitting there, he's kind of got, like, you can imagine him in, like, a rocking chair or something. 
like yeah. a, a very paternal kind of appearance, but they never go down that road. That's only <laughs> been reached through uh, having to talk about something a minute at a time <laughs> over a <laughs> long period. That's how the best things in life happen, detail, <laughs> breaking them down into minute detail and obsessing over them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We live our lives one minute at a time. <laughs> For you, good listeners. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I'm ready to, to move on to, to the next minute, if you guys are. Yep. 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 I'm ready to grind okay. my organ, so we will depart. <laughs> and uh, would you like to, one more time, tell our listeners where they can find your wonderful Mogwai Minute? Uh, the Mogwai Minute.com. We have a... Bar- Don't go to the website. M- minimally it's functioning website, websites. but it does do exactly what it needs to do. Yeah. At least you have uh, one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we can go to like Facebook, our Facebook group, The Mogwai Minutes. Always fun. Come join the weird chats we get into about the movie. Uh, you can also find us on Spotify. That's fun. And then any other podcatcher out there, The Mogwai Minute. Just look for it and we are there. I remember we, we were offered. I remember thinking it was very strange that like our first season had wrapped. And then someone came on the the Minute Makers group and says, like, yeah, I was going to do Batman, but I've, I've even bought the web domain and stuff and set up the site, but I'm not doing it anymore. Does anyone want this? And people kept, like, tagging us <laughs> and going, like, would you guys want this website? And we're like, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need a website, goddammit. We're too cool for that. You've got to seek us out. You've got to find I us. Think, I, we have ever gone night. to the actual website of anything anymore. I'll always go to the Twitter or the Facebook or whatever. You'll find it, all the info, information. You, there, there, there is literally no reason to go to a website as far as I can tell, but... Maybe I'm missing out sometimes. Well, live, live and learn. <laughs> well, especially not ours. <laughs> but do check it them works. out. In, <laughs> do check them out in some way if you haven't, listeners. I'm sure you probably have. It's a wonderful show. One of the greatest out there. So give it a yeah. listen. Got the, uh, the, 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 the listeners no society you guys have. It's very, very active. A lot of fun. A lot of, very chatty. Yeah, yep. A lot of great people in there. Lots yeah. of talk about pineapple on pizza, which is, of Absolutely. course, an important debate. <laughs> very important. Um, yeah, you can even bring that chat to our show if you want, because we don't care. <laughs> no. Go in our listeners. I will not uh, have that cave war and... on our turf, John. I can, I've seen too many cases. Do, it. Do it. I will let our listeners come on the listeners' cave and talk about anything. Doesn't even have to be Batman related. Here, Do whatever you want. You wanna, if you, you want to start an argument reason. in our listeners' page, scented or unscented ointment. That's what. Uh, yes. Oh, which, that's, that's... which lubricant are you fans of, <laughs> listeners? Let us know. Sponsored by Adam and Eve. In fact, when this episode airs, remind me, and I'll do a, a Facebook poll, and we'll we'll decide once and for all which is superior. Definitive loop. It's important to know. Uh, but anyway, join us again on Friday because we'll be back to round out the week with minute sixty-six. That sounds quite evil already. I like it. I like it. Join us then. <laughs> Next time, we all know the Batmobile's the bomb, but an H bomb? That's just foul. But as Penguin gets naughty examining Batman's jalopy, will the cat get her claws into something that'll give her paws atop Ozzy's chest of drawers? Find out Friday. Same Bat-Pod. Different Bat-Minute.